Hello boys and girls, welcome to another repair video. I've been working on this Civic over here. So I've been working on this Civic over here. So this is an 06 Tech Dock C. And this is what I've been doing. I uh, propped up the engine just for safety, I'll explain later. And I had to remove the rack and pinion along with the power steering pump and almost all the hoses except the two hoses that go up to the power steering reservoir tank the little guy so here we got the old one and the new one the old one was leaky in a few places oh, that's the main reason why it had to be replaced right inside there so the seals are gone might as well replace the whole thing Anyways, so uh, you do have to, once you get it out, and I'm going to go through everything, once you get this thing out, you need to switch this uh, rubber bushing, I guess. It was right here, so you just got to switch that. Take the outer tie rods out. So this is, this is the nut. They were still good, so I'm going to reuse them. So uh, I used uh, two 19s and a 24. You can do this either while this is still on the car it actually might be easier or if it's down it, it all depends on how rusty these ends are i actually did it on the, on the ground and i had no issues and you got those uh, hexes on everything over here so it's easy to hold on then what you do this rubber dust cover i guess just simply comes out and along with this yellow whatever this you may want to call that okay so the switching part is oh yeah and this nipple so this nipple comes out here don't over tighten this there's no rubber seals or o-ring inside it seals up with this line so that's all you gotta switch and as you can see the bolts are on top the whole rack just sits on top here so there is the one bracket that holds it, so one hole here, that's this one here, and the other one on this side here, that's here. So these are 17s, these here are 14s, they simply, or this is actually, this is 14, this is 17. Okay, you don't need to remove these, just loosen them up and swing this over. And then on the passenger side, it's just this, and that's where that rubber bushing comes in two 14s on this one so i guess we're doing reverse engineering so obviously you need to take this whole subframe down to get to the wrecking pinion why the main reason is because because of this this needs to slide down and there's no way you can tilt or angle it whatever it needs to come straight down so the very first thing you do is you take the 10 mil bolt out of the shaft right here so this is your steering shaft okay and then you can see on the bottom of it there is a 10 mil bolt simply unscrew that and just let it go there's going to be a some kind of a plastic cover on it so take that out there's no bolt on this it's just kind of like kind of clips in so slide that out before that you obviously have to take this panel out it just holds on on one little twist clip and then it just kind of rips off gently so once you have that bolt out just leave it alone it's gonna you have you you might wanna once the subframe is is coming down you're ready to take it down then you may wanna kind of knock it so it breaks loose but probably not but just to make sure it doesn't hang on the steering shaft is what I'm saying then once that's out make sure you tie up the steering wheel okay now it may not the, these sometimes they have some kind of a sensors uh, some of these cars some don't some do but it's always good practice to do this because if it does have some kind of a sensor i don't know if that's, this car does again but if it does and then you, by some reason the steering wheel goes turns 360 degrees and you don't notice you're gonna have issues so keep it steady 
as you can see if I were to take this down you, you could just spin it endlessly so keep it in place this is always good practice to do so that's the first thing you do then you're gonna want to raise it up so this area your your jack stands or whatever you're gonna be using is on the frame right here nothing beyond that because you're gonna be working in this area over here and what I would what I did was I first took these long bolts where are they these guys here there's four and these go right here okay these are very long what you do you can loosen these up but I, what I always do in this in these kind of cases whenever I drop a subframe I loosen one up I take it all the way down out and I screw it back in you know four or five threads probably five and just leave it in and then I move on to the next one then there's uh, two in the front which is right here so same deal take it fully out and then go in go back in five threads or so then you got two bolts on the side here okay you're not taking these out you're only loosening these up both sides both sides are the same except for one thing this mount uh, over here that's just the one difference on the on the passenger side uh, is that mount so you're only loosening these up and these two one here and one on the other side is right here you see this notch so you're not taking that out you're only loosening it up then you want to proceed and loosen the two bolts that hold hold up the engine mount the bottom engine mount there's two more on the very top on the on each side passenger and driver i still did the the, the safety bar just for for my own safety you probably don't have to do that because this is uh you know this engine and transmission will stay in place uh, with the engine mounts the engine mounts are actually mounted on top so the the rubber or whatever they're not stretching or anything like that but you know as a precaution i still use the bar and i only tied it up on one side this side of the bar right on top it's not tight see this is not tightened up and this the engine did not move down at all only the passenger side right here anyways you're going to loosen these two up slowly because uh, now the subframe will drop a bit and it's going to hold on on the four remaining bolts on those five threads each and this whole thing it's not that heavy you can easily lift it with two people or one big guy probably so this is where the engine mount is mounted once that's out this thing will come down now you're not removing you're not doing anything else now you're going to proceed to remove the lines from the rack and you're going to be working on this side over here and the reason why you want to drop it down is to get uh, just you know a few inches of uh, more room to work in okay it's going to make your day easier and you're, you're dropping the frame anyway so you might might as well do it this way then you got two lines going okay this is the pressure line over here easy access this is a 21 i believe which is this line here with the sensor if you're replacing this line this this pressure line you're gonna have to replace this um, sensor and put this old one on your new line right there so this you're going to be able to get in there with your regular wrench and this line that's the nipple undo the clamp i believe it was a 10 mil or a flat screwdriver and luckily if if you're lucky it's going to be the screw on the clamp is going to be pointing out this way so it's going to be again easy access take the rubber hose out don't worry about the nipple you're going to get it later and uh, slide it out you're going to have power steering fluid coming down just catch it what i did was i undid these lines i did what i just said yesterday evening and i let it drain overnight so once these two are out you're done the rack is free of any lines and whatnot see it's still it's still leaking so once these are out you want to get your jack stands get them ready or whatever you're using 
and you want to undo these three there's a bolt and two nuts on each side holding the the lower bolt joints over here and these are the guys in question so once the bolt joint brackets are loose then you're ready to bring this whole frame down actually never mind there's gonna be you're gonna see it either the pressure line or the other line the return line will mount right over here so don't forget to take this out that's a little 10 mil and there's gonna be one more up on the frame somewhere I'll show it later so once you get the subframe secure in my case I'm raising the car up in your case if you're raising the subframe down then you probably need a some sort of a bigger jack with some wood maybe or something so you're actually able to lower the subframe if your car is on jack stands instead of on a lift so figure that out slowly drop it make sure the ball joint uh, brackets don't catch on the frame kind of i used a pry bar to pry it away shove it right in here and pry it out and after that you can slide it out or do whatever switch those take the rack out like i did i like i was talking about in the beginning of the video then it's just very simple five minutes switch your outer tie rods don't i'm gonna put the tie, outer tie rods once uh, the rack is on the car then once this is out you have all the room you can get to access the power steering pump and you're gonna have another uh mounting point for the return line right on the frame over here don't forget to unplug your sensor from the pressure line these two i'm replacing this one also i gotta still get it out from the reservoir tank and as far as the power oh yeah of course the belt it's a 19 you're gonna see a, a hex a long kind of a head bolt hex sticking out from the top you're gonna see i'm not gonna show it because it's, it's so obvious somewhere down there i don't know if you can see it but it pushes towards the firewall okay that's how you remove the belt it's not easy well not in my case anyways pushing the the tensioner is what i mean once you have the belt out the power steering pump is mounted on two bolts one on the bottom here and one on top now you have much easier access to the top bolt from here if you're doing it right over here imagine if this the subframe would be here then you would have to go from here most likely and that's going to be a bitch so this is what the power string pump looks like it actually mounts more or less like this with the lines sticking towards the back and down a bit or is it up can't remember anyways you do have easy access to take these out you don't have to take this one out it's also a hose so either the fitting or the hose either way you, you'll see what i'm talking about and the pressure line over here two 10 mil nut or bolts take that out and you're free to go now the new pump did come with that fitting that i was talking about this one here that's why you don't have to take it out it's either this nut here or the hose that's clamped on here and that's it oh yeah just notice now that i have to switch out the um pulley and it looks like the pulley is held on by a nut forgot to mention if you're doing the pressure line you know obviously switch the sensor from here to here and then you want to remember to switch the little brackets two of them from here to there and here in the middle there i had to cut the plastic loom out a bit to mount this bracket all right then moving on to the return line this one's uh kind of tricky because the the metal line 
where it mounts to the or connects to the rubber hose which connects to the reservoir tank is all the way up there see the clamp there so obviously no way I can take it off from here well maybe if I had a different rack like a proper rack you know what I'm saying but this all this is in the in my way right now so I cannot this is as far as I go so what I'm thinking I'm gonna remove it from the tank pull it out put the new one on fish it up and connect it back to the reservoir tank so that's what I'm gonna do right now and we'll see if it works okay so what I've done is I took this bracket out that holds the the AC uh, line in from right there it's a 10 mil then uh, push it up and away then also there's a it's holding on on this plastic bracket or clip whatever you want to just pop that open and push it up then you can you have more room simply pull this reservoir tank up and there's the clamp okay guys this is what we got this is what came out out of this end right here so it looks like we're missing some stuff because all I got is this hose here by the shape of it it looks like it goes on here but it's the end is too long so I might as well shorten it up a bit or reuse that one I don't know that one looks all right this is the reservoir part uh, end this is the reckon pinion end but but by the length of it it looks like it may fit right here so this is the right length but you know well shape wise besides this bend over here i do have a hose which i can use this is for this is just a high heat uh, rubber hose for this bend it would be probably too much it's gonna kink for that one maybe but i'm gonna probably reuse for sure reuse this one put this one right over here ah, and this one this one uh, was leaky over here there was not another clamp on here so this was a leaky hose for sure it might as well be the the old clamp over here can't tell for sure I may just end up using two clamps on the end of this hose yeah because this band this is gonna be a bit a bit much well maybe it might work this is a 3 8 by the way yeah this might work actually yeah I'm gonna end up cutting this to length and just uh, bend it up to avoid any future leaks all right let's get to it
Okay, quick update. Fed the line up. This line, there is a that little bracket that holds on the short 10. Put that in, hold it in place so the line doesn't fall. Then I had I actually took this support bar off and the engine did not budge. So that was that was for nothing. You can see these uh pretty uh solid mounts and it's resting on the frame actually as I was saying before, and that's the same on both sides. Anyways, so mounted the uh, clamped on the hose, put this back on, and that plastic there, and that's it. That's all you're doing up top. So now I'm gonna install the rack onto the subframe and then the subframe to the car. And you're gonna watch me do it. Let's cue the music. Update. All I gotta say is the top bolt is it's fun. Yeah, let's just let's just leave it at that. So as you can see, so after I mounted the, the pump, uh, you can see this hose, and actually you're not gonna see it, but it's pretty self-explanatory. There's uh, two plastic clips that's gotta go in. Uh, this rubber one and this one. Then uh, this, the one, the line that I made mounts with the 10 mil right to the frame. Then you got your pressure uh, line holding on. Don't forget the O-ring inside here. And make sure you lubricate every single O-ring you find that you got to put on. Always use a little bit of oil. If it's gonna, if you're gonna try and go in dry, you're gonna rip some stuff apart. Yeah. So two 10 mil bolts. This hose just slips on and clamps down, down, and that's it. Two 12 mil bolts on the pump. Then this pressure line mounts right on the intake manifold, right up there. Don't forget your sensor. And these, I'm kind of gonna just kind of leave them here hanging. So now we're actually finally ready for the subframe. another update as you can see this actually wasn't that difficult at all it's just a lot of walking back and forth as you raise or lower the car whatever your case may be and checking checking if things are aligned so this is what it looks like now the lines are connected you know before you get too close uh, body to the subframe make sure these lines are ran properly okay because uh, you're gonna have to if they're not you're gonna end up uh, separating them again because they are solid so this is your number one concern as you bring the two closer together and uh, yeah I mean I am on the spot but these lines are not original especially the I had trouble with the pressure line it 
the bands were not right and uh, it took me a while to get this fitting in there. I had to bend the lines in several places. Just took a little longer and make sure that the rubber plastic, the plastic woman, it's away from the exhaust. So as I raise it up, I have still uh, what about an inch and a half, maybe two. This part here will still, I don't know if you can see that, that plastic loom there will still go a little bit farther up away from the exhaust, from the downpipe here. And this rubber boot, all you gotta do is make sure it's in its spot. It doesn't uh, go inside the firewall, it just kind of rests against it. So as long as this is in the right spot, you don't need to worry about the boot any longer. I could not mount this line over here because this clip broke, so just zip tie that. Should be okay. All I got left is tighten those big bolts up and then the final two, one on each side over here. And then the outer tie rods. And then, no need to worry about this. Now, what you do, the yellow thing, there you position it in a man in a manner so it, the notch goes in here okay just uh kind of eyeball it should be fine and then you don't need to worry about positioning this the steering shaft all right so this is so this just moves up and down so you are gonna move it all the way up and simply lower it and attach it to the splines there Actually, I can do that right now. No, I can't because I'm going to have to raise this up. So I got... Yeah, okay. So that's the last thing I'm going to do. Careful, don't pull this all the way out. Alright, so you saw me pushing the shaft. I, I switched the yellow alignment thing, whatever. I took it out of the rack and pinion and I put it back on the steering shaft. Figured and then just aimed for it with the steering wheel straight. Uh, rem now remember, I had to adjust the rack and pinion on the floor because it was, it was way off. It was probably a half a turn, maybe even more, uh, out from the original one. So I adjusted that. So now I'm gonna check if I have the same amount of turns um, both all the way both each way left and right so this is this is centered right now so I'm gonna go a full turn left that's one full turn and then let's see so a bit more than a quarter I'm gonna go back to center and go right one full turn and then we do have a little bit more so going left was about here so now we have this much more, whatever, that's fine. All right, getting closer. So as far as alignment goes, here I kind of eyeballed it with the wheels off, but I can see that this part of the uh, rotor is going out. So I got toe out uh, going on, in, on, the, on the left side and this is going in. So I need to, I need to adjust, or the, oh no, never mind, it fell out, what the? What's oh I forgot to put the nut on okay never mind just gonna, just gonna put nut on the tie rod okay I'm gonna tighten these up and then do the adjustments but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna fill it up with uh, power steering fluid actually let's do that right now I was gonna fill it up with power steering fluid and I forgot about the belt so that's what I'm gonna do right now. 
So I'm going to fill it up with the engine off. You want to run the pump for dry for too long. Okay, so actually it's all the way up right now. I'm going to go inside and turn the steering wheel left and right all the way, both, both sides, both ways, several times. And it's empty. Repeat the process. It's actually full right now. Empty again. Oh, never mind. Never mind. I was lying. It's actually full. Okay. So I'm actually going to cap it at this point because it sometimes likes to shoot out the fluid that is and start it. So I'm sure you've noticed, or it should be obvious by now, it did turn the wheel, steering wheel a few times again. I'm going to check the level and we're about one third down, so we need more fluid. That was two bottles so far. This is what I'm using. Now I'm going to start it again, raise it up and check for leaks. Oh no! Just kidding. Uh, we are looking good. No leaks whatsoever. These actually came out pretty straight. If you're gonna adjust the, the inner tie rods on here, this is a 13 by the way, make sure you don't take the rubber boot with it. Sometimes the rubber sticks to the, to the rod and you end up ripping up the boot. So if that happens, loosen this up or simply stick a flat small flat screwdriver in there and spray some pb blaster or wd-40 whatever you got oil whatever so it uh, slips on the rod now i'm gonna have to tighten this up throw the wheels back on and uh, take it for a test drive don't forget cutter pins okay guys taking a stroll the brakes are shot in this thing it's been sitting for a while anyways but you got power steering no leaks but it wasn't like that at first actually i while i had it raised up uh you I already told you this uh you fill up fill it up with the engine off turn the steering wheel left and right several times gotta put the seat belts on then you do the same with the engine running keep filling filling uh, the reservoir up keep turning all the way left and right and that wasn't enough in my case i lowered the vehicle and was ready to go test it out and there i had no power steering at all no no noise you know no famous noise uh, that uh, kind of a grind whine from the pump and at first i, I started thinking maybe i have a, a clog somewhere but i checked online it's supposed to take three quart or three I'm sorry 1.1 quart or uh, somewhere near that about three 12 ounce bottles and before I put in two bottles so that wasn't enough so I managed to uh, what I did was the basically the power steering pump was there was air in it and I need to kind of force it so you want to raise the vehicle up rev the engine up and keep turning the wheel heard the pump go off a few times you know it gave me that little whine here and there the l fluid level went down right away I knew that uh, you know i need to bleed it more so did that two or three times filled it up and now we got power steering mission accomplished all right guys this concludes this repair video i hope it's going to help you out if it did i need you to subscribe do it now like the video dislike the video and i'll see you soon